Hi friends, this is Krish Diyavan Naksal and uh, I'm here today to talk about mis-selling of insurance as a, a savings instrument. Friends, uh, as you know, March 31st is approaching the end of the financial year. People are talking and thinking about tax saving, about uh, what is the rate of interest they are earning, uh, you know, how much interest income have they earned. How much more can they earn in the next financial year? And, uh, you know, investment, all these things are on people's minds. And I had a first-hand experience of some of these things and I'm going to share with you my experience uh, with employees of my bank and uh, employees of uh, Bajaj Alliance or representatives of Bajaj Alliance. So, uh, Basically what happened is they tried to sell me an insurance product as if it was a savings instrument. This is not the first time it has happened. Other bank branches, I am not naming the bank that I have gone to. I have my assets in other banks also and similar things happen with other bank branches as well where Birla Sun Life or Birla's, uh, you know, products are sold uh, as if they are savings instrument or sometimes hybrid products. They will bring together two products, one annuity and one insurance product and they will try to sell it together as if it is one product. So you will be signing two different contracts and then they structure it and explain it in such a way as if you are earning one thing and it is one product and it is sold to you through your bank. Now what happens in these situations is you have a bit of goodwill and trust in your bank branch and you generally have a sense that your uh, details, your savings, your uh, account, your, your FDs, all that information is not being shared with outsiders. So you have a sense of confidence that your uh, confidential data is being kept confidential but that is not necessarily true your confidential data is shared with uh, representatives of companies like Bajaj Alliance and Sun Birla and here's how they do it what they do is if you have got uh, FDs a fair number of FDs and if you are in the phase of either making new FDs or uh, redeeming the FDs and taking money into your savings bank account then that is when they approach you and they say sir would you not like to make some savings and earn more and the way they structure it is something like this they say sir uh, there are various uh, products I am going to come to one specific product that they tried to market from Bajaj Bajaj Alliance but I will tell you about where, what are the kind of products they have. For the typical thing will be, sir, for 10 years or for 12 years, you will give us 1 lakh rupees. So 1 lakh in the first year, 1 lakh in the second year, 1 lakh in the third year and so on. You will go on for 12 years. So you have given us 12 lakhs in 12 years. Then on the 13th year, there is going to be a break year, a drop year, where neither you are giving us anything nor we are giving you anything. Then from the 14th year onwards, we will start giving you one and a half lakh rupees, one and a half lakh rupees every year. Now, this is how they structure it or they, they will say two lakh rupees or some such thing. So you for the first front end of it, you will be giving to the bank, not to the bank, to the to Birla or to uh, Bajaj Alliance or a company like that. At first you will be giving and later they will be giving. This is how they structure it. And at the end of it, there will be a payout because there is going to be an insurance maturity. So when the insurance maturity date is crossed at the, uh, uh, you know, after 20 years or 25 years, you are going to get maturity amount. This much, lump sum. This is how they structure it. Now, the confusion that they cause in your mind is, you say, they, they, they try to make you do simple arithmetic. They try to make you do simple arithmetic like 
for 1 lakh rupees i am getting 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees or 2 lakh rupees you know this is how they try to make you think mujhe zyada mil raha hai the whole point of the you know what is the person's profit motive i should give more i mean i should give less and get more that's your intention now i should give less and get more but what is the delay what is the amount of time that is the part they don't want you to think about and also they don't want you to think about one thing they want you to confuse the difference between fixed deposits where your money is always going to be yours and insurance where once you have given the money to them at the very least it is locked in in the first couple of years you are not going to get anything you might get surrender value which is a small fraction of the amount so you are going to lose most of your money so wh- what is happening in the first one or two years they are earning fat commissions first year especially first premium they are earning a fat commission second premium they are still earning a fat commission after that third fourth fifth sixth they are going to earn a commission out of the money that you are paying so your money if you are giving 1 lakh rupees will straight away become smaller it will not be 1 lakh it will be 95000 rupees or 92000 rupees in the first year you are giving 1 lakh rupees to them it's a premium out of that premium 30 40 50 percent will go to the insurance agent who convinced you so what happens is your 1 lakh rupees straight away is going to become 60000 rupees in the second year 12% or thereabouts will be reduced from that again going towards their commissions so your 1 lakh rupees is going to turn into say 88000 rupees or 85000 rupees some such amount then after and at that point of time if you cancel the contract for any reason you are losing a chunk of your value you are losing a very large chunk of your value so you will not cancel so you are locked in it is not your money it is their money now this is the distinction i want to make between your money and their money and this is a very important distinction if there are a lot of terms and conditions on you taking back your own money it has stopped being your money it has become their money if it is your money your money will come back to you without too many terms and conditions and usually without a loss if you make an fd and you break it you are not going to lose the value you will lose on interest so what they call it will be a loss in your little profit you will be losing a little bit of interest or you will not even be you will be getting pro rata interest if you have made a uh, 390 days deposit and you broke it in 290 days then you will get interest as per that 290 days at that rate more or less maybe uh, maybe there will be some small penalty on that of maybe a percentage point but you would still have got a larger amount of money not a lesser amount of money so it is your money now if you have given it to somebody who imposes terms and conditions on you it has ceased to be your money the more the number of terms and conditions the longer the lock in period the more they say we will give it to you like this and like that and not any other way the more it has become their money and it has ceased to be your money so this is a very important point that i want to make the distinction between your money and their money is the number of terms and conditions that stand between you and your own money now let me come to the specific instance that i was offered it was a bajaj allianz uh, product insurance product as i said it is being sold to me as if it is a savings scheme so the insurance part of it is sto- told to you almost incidentally it's like sir you can take it in your name or you can take it in your children's name and so on and so forth the product is being sold in this way they are saying you will pay 1 lakh in the first year 1 lakh in the second year third fourth fifth sixth seventh year 111111 lakh then eighth year there's a drop year which which means neither you will give us nor we will give you then ninth year onwards till 20th year you are going to pay us, we are going to pay you 
53,000 and something something an odd amount 53,400 or some such amount so 8th year is a drop 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 we are going to give you this 53,000 53,000 53,000 etc then on the 20th year you will the the thing reaches maturity and you will get a maturity amount in addition to this there is another version of the same thing where they say your first year you give us 1 lakh then second year onwards we will give you 12000 rupees as a return in the very next year now you will think oh i am earning 12000 rupees as an interest for my first year so you will think it is 12% return for my first year's investment that is not how you need to look at it now i am going to talk to you about how i look at it and how i analyze it because they try to present it to you in a way as if it is a simple arithmetic uh problem and really it is not it is actually a logical problem and they are trying to confuse your logic so here is how i try to stay unconfused first of all let us leave aside this thing of the uh, version where they say they are going to give you 12000 from the second year onwards and the reason is what i ask is net instead of me giving you 1 lakh rupees i am giving you 1 lakh rupees and you are giving me chutta you are giving me change of 12000 rupees so what i am giving you is 88000 rupees third year i am giving you 88000 fourth year i am giving you 88000 and so on and so forth and then that is going to change the nature of the returns later on but basically what it means is net net i am giving you money so don't try to make me feel like i am getting a return on 12 of 12% on the first year and then a return of 12% on the second year that's not how i need to look at it how do you look at it how do you analyze it so i'm going to give you two three different ways to analyze it i'm going to also talk about the value proposition of buying insurance whether it is at my age or whether it is for someone younger like for example my daughter around age 30 they try to sell it to you like this they say either you buy it for yourself or why don't you buy it for your daughter sir because she will get better returns she will get a higher rate of return why because it is insurance that is why we looked at it i'm going to explain that part too let's first talk about the value proposition that they offered me and let me simplify it i'll stay with the first version where i'm giving 1 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh 7 lakh years what is my sacrifice what i am sacrificing is i am giving you 1 lakh for 20 years and therefore i am because it's a 20 year tenure thing so i am losing interest on an a fixed deposit i have to take a fixed deposit i have to break it okay what would have been a fixed deposit of 1 lakh rupees <coughs> i'm going to give it to you so what am i losing i'm losing a an fd which i would have kept as an fd for 20 years then the next year i'm losing an fd which i would have kept for 19 years then another fd which i would have kept for 18 years and so on so seven fds so 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 14 14 14 years the last fd i would have kept for 14 years at whatever rate of interest so it would have earned interest for 14 years what is my sacrifice my sacrifice is 7 lakh rupees and the interest that has to be calculated compounding interest which has to be calculated for 20 years 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 that way then that is my sacrifice if you calculate that what do you get if you calculate it at 5% currently rates are 7% 7% plus even if you calculate it at 5% okay which is the lower range of things 
you get an amount of around nine and a half lakh rupees interest on those seven lakh rupees. So seven lakh principal plus nine and a half lakh interest is around sixteen and a half lakh rupees. Maybe a little less, sixteen thousand, uh, sixteen lakhs and uh, twenty thousand or thirty thousand, some such amount you get twenty twenty five thousand. Small, uh, in it's in that band. You are, that is your what you need to reach. That is what you need to get. Now let us not look at the life cover of thirty lakh rupees. Let's not look at that because that's a different part of the story. What you need to look at is. now are they returning this amount to me are they returning 16.5 lakh rupees and this is counting interest at 5% today as i said you are getting 7% 7% would yield much more assuming of course that 7% lasts through the entire duration of 20 years but even if it doesn't last for 20 years even if it lasts for 10 years 7% you will exceed that amount now what are they giving me they said it is going to be around 16200 sir we totaled it they totaled it and this is what they are giving me cumulatively then i said how is it making sense how does it make sense even at 5% interest for me to get marginally more if at all anything more like i may get 20000 rupees more if i subscribe to their scheme I haven't read all the ifs and buts. I don't know what all conditions are there. What other conditions are there? I'm not getting into it. So it is not a substitute for even a five percent fixed deposit. Forget about a seven percent fixed deposit. Not even a five percent fixed deposit. If I'm going to take market risks, I might as well go out into the market and put my money on you know into the market. There are plenty of people who circulate their money. uh and get rates of interest like 2% per month and all that kind of uh, thing that's market and of course there's a risk that you won't get your money back but that is the kind of market there is there is a money market if i am interested in a uh, market risk why don't i do that i might do that so that doesn't make sense then they said okay uh, why don't you keep it in the name of your daughter she is younger so she will get a better in- because it's insurance first of all money is money you are not selling it to me as insurance you are selling it to me as a saving scheme as a way of earning interest then how does it why should i even bother with you know why should it be uh, giving why should you be giving more if it is in the name of my daughter so that doesn't make any sense but let us go with it i said okay let's do the calculation what you would be giving my daughter that is if a person is 30 and they did the calculation it didn't work out that much more it works out marginally more like 30000 rupees more after a duration of 20 years how does that make any sense it doesn't make sense 30 years i mean sorry 20 year duration and you are going to give a piddling amount of 20000 rupees more as against fd now what are you gaining with fd you have the freedom the biggest thing you gain with fd is freedom i can break it this year if i want i can break it next year if i want i can break as i want when i want or i can reinvest as and when i want that's my freedom i'll be sacrificing all that freedom if i go in for your insurance scheme why would i sacrifice my freedom why would i lock myself into your scheme that is the biggest gain by staying with an fd so and you know the fd is considered a very plain vanilla kind of an insur uh, an instrument savings instrument people say oh you have to be racy you should be putting money in mutual funds and all that yeah sure let's look at it. look at the value propositions that they offer but just because it's plain vanilla doesn't mean it's bad sometimes vanilla is the best flavor so you you really shouldn't go into that mythology of uh, it's only vanilla it's it's uh, savings you are brainless no you are trying to make me use my brains and lose money i am not happy with that now let's talk about the insurance part of the proposition 30 lakh rupees life cover they say who am i giving life cover to first of all is it my wife she is reasonably well provided for we have assets why would i be interested in committing money 
towards giving further life cover. I am not interested. Is it my children? They are no longer dependents. They are grown up. They are grown up kids. Let them earn and live their own lives. Am I interested in protecting them? Well, they have the assets. They can continue to live on the assets. So, who am I giving protection to? Do I need to give life cover? When I was younger, when I was, let us say, 24, 25, 30, and my kids were really small, and my wife was young and I was earning at a lot, uh, you know, a, a good amount of business income. Yeah, I have not built up an asset position. So what happens? I have not built up savings. There hasn't been enough time for building up savings. So the question is, oh, what happens if you die and your dependents are left hanging high and dry? So you say, yes, I need to have 10 lakh, 20 lakh, 30 lakh rupees as cover for them. I need to give them life cover. Today, why do I need to give them life cover? What is the need for life cover? They have got assets that will cover them. There is an asset position. So, this is one thing. Then the other value proposition of why don't you insure your children? Why don't you take the insurance in the name of your children? Who will be the nominee? question who will be the nominee I would be the one putting up the money for insuring them in the event of their early demise do I want 30 lakh rupees why do I need 30 lakh rupees from their dying I don't think so why would I want it makes no sense to me I am not their dependent my life is not in any danger of becoming unsettled if I were their dependent then it might make some kind of sense. But I am not their dependent. So how would it make sense for me to be their nominee in an insurance scheme? Doesn't make sense. Do I have to be my wife's nominee? Do I have to insure her in order to gain from her early demise? Why? Doesn't make sense. So insurance has a very specific purpose and the purpose is to cover your near and dear ones when they are your dependents when you don't have an asset position and if you were to die and you are the breadwinner and without a breadwinner they are left without an umbrella in life no coverage then you buy insurance in order to cover that possibility randomly buying insurance makes no sense at all coming to the tax savings element again I think most of it is imaginary and fear based. I am Krish Dhirban Naxal, Jai Maharashtra, Jai Hind.